Hi there. So I thought I'd start a new playlist today um, because I was sort of going through some of my bookcases and I thought, well, I've got a lot of books that I kind of inherited uh, soon after my dad died and my mother came to live with me and we sort of combined two households many, many years ago. Uh, and I ended up with a lot of my, my parents' old books, a huge collection, most of which is in the garage. Uh, but, you know, I, I have quite a, a, an interesting book collection. So I thought I'd, from time to time, uh, just sort of look at a book from my book collection and combine it maybe with a book review as well. And just finished reading um, this particular book, which is uh, a John Dixon Carr novel <laughs> from the 1930s. And uh, this edition is actually the 1950s. It's an old pan paperback, which my parents probably had in their bookshelf when I... It, it, it's, this, this edition published 1957, so two years before I was born. So this has been around since I was probably a year adult. Um, and I thought I would review this book. However, two interesting facts came up while I was kind of looking at uh, the facts behind this book. It's pan books, which are uh, pan books started in 1944 uh, as an independent publisher. It's since become Pan Mac Macmillan. But while I was uh, investigating Pan Books, I discovered that the person who originally set it up was uh, an ex-World War I flying ace called Alan Bott. And that sort of made me double take, not just because it's my surname, but I actually have an un had an uncle called Alan Bott, but Obviously, it's not him. He was flying in the Second World War. But so I looked at this uh, Alan Bott and uh, I discovered that he was born in the late 19th century in Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire. Now, most of my Bott ancestors come from Staffordshire. So possibly the person who set up Pan Books is a distant cousin of mine. <laughs> How brilliant is that? I might be, as a professional genealogist, I, I may look into that. The second interesting thing I found when I was um, looking into pan books was this little logo, the original logo for pan books, the picture of the, the Greek god Pan uh, blowing the pan pipes. Did you know that was originally designed by the author Mervyn Peake? One of my favourite authors, the, the man who wrote Titus Crone and Gorman Gas, the Gorman Gas trilogy. Absolutely brilliant set of books. So two really interesting facts about pan paperbacks. And of course, uh, as most of you probably know, um, they did a lot of really uh, interesting, sort of, a lot of detectives, but they were the first books to publish the James Bond books as well. So lots of interesting facts about pan. And John Dixon Carr is an also, also another uh, interesting person. Um, he, wrote, he was part of that golden age of uh, mystery, crime, detective novels of uh, the early 20th century. Um, he wrote quite complex uh, detective novels. He looks, doesn't he, like the proverbial English gentleman. Well, I was really surprised to find out he was actually American. Um, but he came to England and settled in England and, you know, you wouldn't believe he was American because his his novels are set usually in English villages. Uh, his characters are, you know, often very, very English um, sort of country gent types. So interesting, very interesting. I've just finished reading this one, The Crooked Hinge. Very complex plot, but a great read. I just <laughs> really enjoyed reading it. Um, very much, obviously, old school detective story, um, you know, belonging to the age of Agatha Christie. Uh, I do love a good detective story um, and I do love those kind of old school uh, tales. Um, 
as I say, this one is quite a complicated plot. Some interesting characters. The main detective is one of his sort of series of detectives called Dr. Fell. So if you've never, if you like detective stories, but you've never read any John Dixon Carr, I, I do highly recommend them if you really like that old school style of detective novel. The ending is by no means predictable. And uh, it, um, not to give anything away, it's not the usual type of ending. I, it, I have a question over whether it's a satisfying ending uh but it's keeps you reading this book you don't really know what the hell is going on throughout and what is the crooked hinge we don't know what the crooked hinge is until very close to the end i don't like the cover but you know it's eye-catching so that's mainly the point with book covers uh but, you know, and that, and that was part of the style of the time. Let me just give you an idea of the main plot without any spoilers. Two men claim the name of Sir John Fernley. Both claim his enormously wealthy estate. Each declares the other is an imposter. But a third man has real proof. A logical candidate for murder? Perhaps. But the final answer is contained in the life-sized mechanical automaton hidden in Farnley Court. Well, that's, I'll leave it there. It's uh, just to give you a little intriguing uh, synopsis. In parts, it's quite creepy and very mystifying. The plot is so complex that it you really don't know what's going on until towards the end. So that's part of what keeps you reading. And what I like about his style is that underneath, although it's not humorous, there is a kind of underlying dry humour that kind of drives it along and um, part of that sort of old school style of detective novel and uh, I just enjoyed reading it. I, I read it quite quickly for me. I'm quite a slow reader. So if you like old school detective novels and you've never read John Dixon Carr then yeah go ahead and read that. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will look out for more interesting books from my bookshelves for future videos. And if you'd like updates, please subscribe and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.